UFC 308 just took place and Hamzat Chemaev proved himself aura restored for Hamzat Chemaev with a first round submission win over Robert Whitaker. Nasty, nasty. It was supposed to be a rear naked choke, ended up being kind of like a face or jaw crank. Rob Whitaker had a gruesome injury. His teeth were punched to the back of his throat. Crazy stuff, guys. We're going to talk about that co-main event right now. UFC 308. Stick around to hear my thoughts. I'm Wyatt, and this is Fight Society. All right. Before we get into the video, please make sure to like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. Become a channel member. Click that link down below. It really helps me out a lot, help grow the channel, and uh, help make this uh, the full-time deal. So UFC 308 co-main event, five-round fight potentially, ended up only needing less than one. Rob Whitaker submitted in the first round by Hamzat Shamaya via face crank. Gruesome, gruesome jaw and teeth injury. I'm not going to show it on here. I do not want the video to get demonetized. It is a nasty injury. Rob Whitaker got his teeth basically punched in the back of his mouth. So Hamzat Shamaya stood on the feet very short amount of time and then shot a very aggressive freaking kamikaze dive into a takedown, suffocating grappling all over Rob Whitaker for that entire first round. Rob Whitaker Basically got nothing off defensive grappling. While he did look impressive, he did look good getting Hamzat's hooks out, fighting the chokes, getting Hamzat off of his back until he didn't. And, you know, Hamzat got his back that four minutes of that type of pressure, three minutes, whatever it was, and then sneaking that choke in and then basically having an injury. It's tough. Rob Whitaker never got out of first gear. I had Rob Whitaker by decision or late round finish, but it did go the way that I said it would go in that if Hamzat's going to win, it's going to be in the first seven minutes, like the first round, round and a half, something like that. And if Rob Whitaker won, he was going to need to survive that onslaught. And evidently, that's not what happened. So Hamzat has proved himself or restored middleweight division contender number three, only ranked behind the champion, Drickus Duplessis, number one contender, Sean Strickland, and number two contender, Israel Adesanya. Title shot might be next for Hamza. We might see him jump Strickland. That's what I want to see. At this point, I don't care to see Strickland versus DDP again. I'd rather see Hamza versus DDP. I want to see if the physicality of DDP can fend off the strength and the explosiveness and submission threats and grappling of Hamzat Shemaev, because I think it will. I think DDP is such a bulldozer that he could survive an early on onslaught from Hamzat and potentially get a late round finish. I know I'm saying the same things about DDP that I said about Rob Whitaker, but they're very different fighters. And DDP is a lot more muscular and a lot more of like a bulldozer for the weight class. So I think that's what you got to do next. Forget Strickland. You lose the belt with no defenses, even though it was a very competitive fight, split decision, could have gone either way. And then a boring decision win against Paulo Costa, who's ranked way below him, coming off of a loss to Whitaker. I think you throw Hamzat in there for the belt. I think you do it in Saudi Arabia in February. They're talking about Marab versus O'Malley in Saudi Arabia in February. I think you got to do DDP Hamzat. It makes perfect sense. Hamzat's from that part of the world. Muslim fighter fits in well. Um, and honestly, guys, I was looking for a fraud check from Rob Whitaker on Hamzat, and that's not what happened. Hamzat proved himself middleweight contender. Obviously, will not be making weight at 170 pounds ever again, but strong, explosive against a really good defensive grappler like Whitaker. You're in a lot of danger when you're in there with Rob Whitaker and Hamzat made it look very easy. You know, a couple observations about Hamzat throughout fight week. He seemed a lot more humble. He said that he was dealing with things throughout the past year or so. He became a father. And but he, I was a little concerned because he looked not aggressive and aggressiveness is such a big part of Hamzat's game. He looked reserved and it, he looked like his body looked soft as well. He needed extra time to make weight. The UFC extended the weigh-in window by an extra hour, specifically for Hamzat and Sharaput and Magomedov. I was wrong. Everything that I saw about Hamzat during fight week, I was like, oh, he's going to come out flat. Whitaker's going to survive that time that I've mentioned, that five to seven minutes. And then Hamzat's going to gas. And Whitaker's going to put it on him, late round finish or decision win. And that's not what happened. Whitaker came out, or I'm sorry, uh, Hamzat came out, pedaled to the metal immediately, insane pace. Obviously, it does leave some questions as in like if somebody makes it past that first round, if somebody makes it per past that first seven minutes, what happens? Does Hamzat wilt under that five round stress if he actually has to go through it? Because like I've said before, the UFC fight or the UFC 294 fight against Kamaru Usman, if that was a five-round fight, Kamaru Usman would have won. 
And so against somebody like DDP that's gone five rounds, against somebody like Sean Strickland or Israel Adesanya that can survive, or at least DDP and uh, Israel Adesanya for sure can survive very uh, tough first rounds, tricky first and second rounds, and then come out and win, especially from a defensive grappling standpoint. So I'm interested in seeing if they let Hamzat skip over Strickland for a title shot in the early part of next year. I think DDP is ready. DDP has been out since uh, September. I think that's when the September, no, it was August 17th. It was, it was uh, my birthday month was the Sydney pay-per-view with Izzy and DDP. So that was August. Two months later, Hamzat just won. I think you do it in April. I, I think February might be too quick. I think they're going to probably do Marab on that card, the February card in Saudi Arabia. But DDP's had more time off and Hamzat took no damage. So as long as the weight cut side of things is okay for Hamzat, as long as the immune side, immunity system, immune system side of things of Hamzat is worked out, then I don't see a reason why they wouldn't do DDP and Hamzat in Riyadh in, I think it's February 1st, as they're talking about doing a pay-per-view there. But that the only roadblock there is if they already have Strickland and DDP booked with a date and a location and a contract signed and all of that. Until that happens and it's all verbal agreements and there's really nothing that Strickland can do to keep Hamzat from skipping him over as long as the UFC wants that. So that's my thoughts, guys. Rob Whitaker is uh, Rob Whitaker's going to bounce back just fine. I don't think this means he's done at the top of the mountain. I think he's probably done as a champion, but I think he can sit in that top five for still several more years to come. He's only 33. So there's my thoughts on this. Hamzat looked amazing. Aura restored. Number one contender after Sean Strickland, I'd assume. And... Uh, Rob Whitaker, just a tough night out. Never got out of first gear. It happens sometimes. So let me know what you guys thought about this fight. Hamzat proved himself aura restored. Let me know your thoughts down below.